Right, so we're in the Triffid sector, KCVC222. Appears to be an awful lot of very bright stars around. Right, so we spent a little while in the Triffid Nebula at the end of the last one, and I said I was heading towards the Omega Nebula, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. Right, so let's find a star to navigate by. You'll do. Now it's not that far, I'm only about 800 light years distant, so I should reach there in this episode, unless I run into something really spectacular on the way. Hmm, I'm going to jump down here anyway because that's an interesting looking system. Right, so we've arrived at our quadruple. That looks like a class K in the background. Sadly, all we have here is four stars. That one's practically a solar analogue. I've only just started this episode and I can already tell that it's... Uh, this could be one of those where not a lot happens very fast. Now here's a class B nearby, so... Right, a class B randomly in the middle of nowhere. What have we got here? It's pretty smart looking. Nice colour to that one. Just thought I'd pop out here and have a look at these two because... Yeah, they're pretty close together. Odd enough looking that it warrants a picture, I guess. Let's continue onward though. Alright, here's a couple of bees in the distance. That'll be my next target. Right, so there's nothing interesting around this A, and that's just high metals. What the? Right, now, I'm gonna guess that that's uh, a lot of stars. Now that got pretty spectacular pretty fast, because that is an awful lot of stars. And you can see it's right in the direction of where I'm heading to next. And what else do we think's over in that direction? Eagle Nebula, maybe? Maybe not, actually. Hmm. I remember when it was nine stars. A lot of rings here, and look at this thing! Yeah, there's some pretty bizarre looking things here. All of them got rings. I wonder, I wonder what makes that happen. I mean, that can't be a fluke, surely. There must be something. I mean, what's the chances of four, five, six, seven, eight planets all having rings? And they're all double planets as well. It's pretty tempting to go out there, but I'm not gonna. F7K9. I'm going to you. Is this just outside the Omega Nebula? Right, so it was simply an F and a K. Right, so an F8, a K6, and a G1. Got to be at least water there. Not that it will matter, because I won't be going for water. Yeah, I'm wondering, is this just the same as what the Lagoon Nebula was like, where you had the nebula, and then next to it you had a slew of bright Class B stars? Drive charging. This seems like an awful lot of stars, though. Yep, I'm clearly heading towards the Omega Nebula. Right then. Hmm. 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 Right, so at least four water worlds. Oh, look how far out that is. Right, these are getting scanned anyway, for sure. Can you see land under that? Or is it just water? I mean, four million days. Right, I'm going to start my scan here. Right, so that one's a water world. I'm guessing this one will be too. Yep. So once again, I get two water worlds around each other. Right, 
I'm going for a quick look at them. This one's pretty small. It's nice enough though. I'm guessing this one's pretty much going to be its twin. Yeah, it's pretty similar looking at least. Both of them have got carbon dioxide atmospheres. Pretty good temperatures on it as well. Very, very similar. I mean, those two are really are twins. In almost every way. Right, now the question is, knowing what you know, would you go out to this one now? It's a Class G, it's not that big, and this is 2.25 AUs out, so I would expect this to be cold. It's at least water, yeah? It has to be at least water, that one, and this one's probably water too. Well, I was getting ready for a cup of tea anyway, so I will just go make it while I autopilot towards here. It's almost like the further out you go, the deeper, sort of deeper black and more contrast between the stars and, and the and just the blackness of the galaxy. Don't think I've ever seen the Magellanic clouds looking that bright. Right, so this has been a fair old hike out to here. I'm only expecting water worlds here though. Right, so that one was a water world. Not gonna get too close to it, looks like the methane one. It's got a little moon as well. Sort of the ammonia one, yeah? And it's terraformable, so that's good. It just leaves this now, and I'm pretty sure that's this water as well, and it's a bit smaller than this one too. Four water worlds in one system, that's the only reason I really came here to scan it, in all honesty. One, two, three, four. That is my record, because I said that three was my record in my last video. <laughs> It's pretty typical really, I see I'm not going out to scan water worlds unless there's, you know, a couple of them and then the game just starts throwing multiples at me. It's like anything to slow me down from my main target. Now apparently there is a system that, well the record holding system for most water worlds is 6 in one system. You can check that out in the, you know, the Universal Cartographics Galactic Record uh, thing, you can search, do a search for that. Four must be pretty rare, yeah? Right, so pretty large key, that looks like water. There is nothing else to entice me out that far though. Yep, it's definitely spreading out a little bit. Now this could be an interesting system I'm about to jump into. Right, so what have we got? Hmm, not a lot. Been discovered as well, dear me. I have gone kind of sideways because I am so easily distracted from my targets. I'm not that far away though, so I can head back towards it. Yeah, look at all these. Yeah, a bunch of really hot blue stars just all together outside the Omega Nebula. Now then. You have a class K with this. It just looks like water. But what is that? I've never seen anything looking like that. It's just a high metal content world, but it's got a very 
Very strange look to it. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Just going for a visit in here. Yep, that's a pretty cool shot. Right, just going to scan this water world and then head on my way. But yep, that's definitely kind of strange looking that one. Very close to earth composition again, but it's really, really cold. And we've got some more water. That just looks pretty bizarre in all honesty. Very nice looking water world this one. Looks like a true water world, not massive poles on it. These are going to be really smart as I get closer and closer. You can only imagine what the sky is going to look like with all these massive blue stars around. Oh, look at it now. Right, now you can clearly see this is this is absolutely massive. Now right, what have we got here? One, two. Hmm. Yeah, they're interesting enough looking. Nice looking planet actually. Right, and to nobody's great surprise, it's yet another water world. Pretty similar to the last one, really. Pretty crazy, really. I mean, could you imagine what it must be like? Looking out of that and seeing that. You wouldn't even bother naming constellations because everything would be completely dominated. The entire sky dominated by this nebula, the stars, all these class B stars. I mean, yeah, we've got Orion and Cassiopeia and uh, the Plough, <laughs> or the Big Dipper, if you're American. But it's really nothing to compare to that, is it? And that's what it looks like after logging out for a few hours. And it's pretty nice, yeah. Hmm, it's a K7 super giant, just a little bit off the track, so I'm going to head over there before I go back to the nebula. It's also got a G4 around it, that's pretty interesting. There we go. 157 light seconds away, so it's not, you know, it's not huge. Like many of the, the other super giants that we've seen so far. It says it's only an orange giant, which is kind of strange given its uh, designation. Now, the Class G is pretty similar to Sol, but nothing really interesting around it. Right, so let's head back to the nebula. Now, where are all those blue stars? I think I'm going to jump over to this one before I go anywhere else. So, an A9, a G0 and an A7. So, again, you're expecting the A9 and the G0 to be pretty close together. I think I'm maybe getting kind of further away from the, the nebula again, but I'll head there after this one. Unless I see something else interesting, of course. Nice entrance, that was smart. Like I said... 
was going to be close by. It's only 30 days distant. None of the planets are anything to write home about though, and this other class A is pretty far out. I'll just scan the yellow and be on my way. Right, a couple of bees and a knee. Really cool. The way that those stars sort of came into focus. Right, so I guess we're basically getting to the, the stage now where we're almost into this. This mass of blue stars. There's a neutron star over there. We'll head to there, I think, next after this one. Now, the thing about this is, all of these are going to be scanned by now, yeah? For sure. You just think about the money in and around this area. Let's just go into options, sorry, view. We'll just go with type O and B stars so we can see. Right, yeah, basically all of this is within a hundred light years, all of those. Think of the money scanning all of these, yeah? Or even just, you know, randomly jumping back and forward. You could be talking up to 50,000 credits, on average that is, per system here, yeah? That's just jumping in, scanning the main star and doing a, an advanced scan. Some of them will have multiple stars, be well, worth well over 100,000 credits each, yeah? Some of them. So, yeah, there's a few million credits just in this year, I would say. All of them are class Bs. So I'm actually just gonna do that, in fact. Jump around these, there's gonna be some black holes and stuff as well. Now, what's this A-E-B-E -E thing? I'm gonna have to see what that is. A B5, an AEBE. -E. That must be a different type of star. I'm gonna have to look that one up. I'm gonna head over to it anyway though. Aha, uh -huh, right. Yeah, I have heard of these before. Herbig AEBE -E stars. Young stars typically less than 10 million years old with characteristics of either A or B class main sequence stars. But usually between 2 and 8 solar masses. And the mass of the protostar determines its spectral class when it joins the main sequence, as we already know. So they're very young stars. It should be less than 10 though, and it says it's 41. The reason for that is everything seems to be 41, yeah? The system should develop at the same time, theoretically. So, yeah, it's just an artifact of the game engine. It's not quite right. They're probably worth quite a bit of money though, I would guess. Now, I wonder how far out it can be scanned. Right, so it can be scanned at 1600, which is a bit surprising because that's kind of red dwarf range. We'll head out to it anyway and see what it looks like. I'm guessing it looks an awful lot like a typical T Tauri star in the game. <laughs> it just goes on and on now. See a blue. Still can't scan this. Maybe under a thousand? I mean, a thousand light seconds is, uh, yeah, 1200 light seconds. Now, I wonder if it is scoopable. I wonder if I can even get that close to it. <laughs> How smart is that, though? Yeah, it does just look like the T Tauri, which is, you know, a very young star. It's spinning very quickly, as you would expect for something with a lot of mass and pretty small. And judging by this, it's not scoopable, as you would also expect, given, you know, what the, the game engine tends to do. Certainly interesting enough, though. You can see there, it's almost five solar masses, but it's very small. Now, these two Class Bs are orbiting very close to each other. I'm not actually that far away, in all honesty, so... I was going to say I was going to go out and scan them, but as you know, at 12 and a half light seconds distant, they're going to be scannable from here. For a Class B, that is. Right, so here is a neutron star and a B5. There was another one. B5, a neutron star and a black hole. Let's jump over here. Right. Get some of these here. The pretty, um... Blue looking, possibly not quite blue enough though. I'm not going to bother going out to, to neutron stars and stuff like that, unless they're really close by. This is really about making money, so 
you'd really rather than waste time scanning everywhere scanning everything just you know jump into the system do a quick scan and keep going Right, now this is what I was talking about, about jumping into a, a, a system like this and doing an advanced scan. I mean, how much money is in this simply from the advanced scan? Frameshift drive charging. So this must be an actual star in some catalogue somewhere, SST GLMC. No idea, but if you Google it, you'll find something about it. Again, this is another system that's worth an awful lot of money, simply for jumping into it. This is quite an interesting looking system. Yeah, look at the difference in the colours of these Class Bs. That one looks more like a Class A almost, only 1 million years old. This much smaller one is orbiting pretty, pretty nearby. That one's a lot further out. Yeah, they're all Class Bs, but they're all pretty different. Right, now check this one out, B5 Neutron Star and 2 Class Gs, and that's a G1B, so that should be a G Giant, a G Super Giant, that can't be right. Right, so, yeah, like I said, we've got Class B, got a Neutron Star, very nearby, and then we've got this Class F, actually, as a Class F Super Giant, I've got Class G a little bit further out. Now this is one of those systems that is actually really, really cool. Look at the rings on this. Look at the look of this thing. That's worth visiting, I think. Yep, this is all pretty close. So, that's 26,000 light years away. It's eight light seconds out. But that's what a, a class... A class F supergiant can be scanned 26,000 light seconds away. It's actually quite strange because I'm pretty sure on the galaxy map it said it was a class G. It does, yeah. It says it's a G0. The 1B lets you know that it's, you know, a supergiant star. But for some reason here it's saying it's a class F, yeah? And also here. Hmm. Yeah, there's one or two little curiosities about the, the game engine that throws up stuff like that that you're not really expecting. I mean, I am just in a sea of blue stars now. That's what space looks like here. Hmm, it's just high metals I'm afraid, a pretty rare thing to get, even water world around a, a blue star, that's for sure. Look at this, what is going on here? Well oh, that's gonna, I'm gonna have to go out to visit this, yeah. Yeah, a class M with, um, rings? Now, you do see the odd dwarf with rings on it, yeah, but you don't often see rings around a main sequence star. Now, did I just imagine that completely? Can't really see anything. Not entirely sure what's going on there. It should have rings, but I can't detect anything. It's spinning pretty fast. I can't quite figure out what's going on with these rings, but they do not appear to be anywhere near. Well, that's pretty cool, yeah? Look at the differences in those two stars from here. Right, we've got a gas giant that's got rings on it nearby, so quick look at this one. It's a class 4. No, I can't quite figure that one out. This has clearly got rings on the map, however, it does not appear to have rings out here. Right, some very close neutron stars here. They've got an orbital period of 0.1 day around each other and they're only a day around the main star and this other one's not that far away either. And in between all that you've got this. Time to make some easy money. You can see the two neutron stars there. Very close by. We have pretty easy 100,000 made in this system. 100,000 plus. Always interesting to see Stuff like F's and G's around these B's as well. 
your real system of stars, you would expect to find many, many objects, planetary objects around a system like this. <laughs> or, you might not find anything more than a bunch of stars. And that's what I got. Do not forget though that my initial target was the Omega Nebula, yeah, so maybe another few stars and then I'll head, head to there just to finish off this episode. Right, we've got a very nearby black hole here, and this one's not far away, this class B is pretty close as well. Now, there's a black hole in front of me, again you can see the, uh, the stars moving fast because of the, no it's the light from the stars, because of the gravitational lensing. There you go. A little bit careful because I am starting to heat up a little bit here. Right, so that must have been a couple of million credits scanned there. Let's head into the nebula now. I think I'll go via this one though. Bunch of stars again, it's all about the money. An awful lot of these bees are, are very close doubles, yeah? Much more than you would see outside of a cluster like this. So one thing I've noticed while I've been in here tonight. So this is what the Omega Nebula looks like from here, it's uh... It doesn't look all that impressive right now. 50 light years distant but I'm coming in at the wrong end, yeah? I'm coming in at the dark end, the dark side of it. So, ah, when, when you see stuff like this, it's just so smart really. I mean, just think about it, if you lived at this side of the Omega Nebula, you would you would have no idea of its, you know, majesty on the other side. You can just about see bits of the blue inside it now though. Let's see if we can skirt around the side of it rather than go in. And here's an A7G6, so we'll jump over here and hopefully we should be able to see a bit more of the blue. When we look at it. Frameshift drive right, we can start to see some kind of blue here. You should get a bit lighter as I get further away from the star. Quite a lot of blue now, yeah? Now we can take a quick jump into it, an F4, an F6 and a K9. Now you look like a very nice target then. This will probably be my final system for this episode. Frameshift drive charging. Right, there's one thing I am noticing here, there's a real lack of planets around. So many systems, just stars. Yeah, you've got a pretty nice view from around here. Imagine, I mean just imagine looking out at that, What you would wonder what it was really. You've got all the blue gas, you've got the red gas, and then you've got all of that. Couple of stars. No planets sadly though, and this has really been the story of this second part of the video. There's been very little in the way of planets. You really wouldn't expect an awful lot habitable around, you know, all those blue stars. There may well be something in and around here, but clearly there's not an awful lot of difference in this nebula compared to the, the Triffid nebula that I have already been to, you know. And there's no central star or anything like that. So in the next episode I am going to head towards the Eagle Nebula.
I'm only 1500 light years distant, so I'll see you in the next one.